probando, probando. Un, dos, tres. Are you guys ready for this video? Hi, friends. We are Maria Jose and Chase. And if you're new here, this is our home. And a lot of you might know, but maybe you don't know, this is your first time here. We used to live in a school bus before the van. Over the last couple of years, we've been able to try out bus life. We've been able to try out van life. And back when we started traveling in the bus, there weren't any comparisons between the two from yeah. anyone who had lived in both of them. If you're thinking of hitting the road or like converting a rig to travel and you are wondering the pros and cons to both of them, you're gonna find that out right here. So go ahead, stick around, get some popcorn, hit that subscribe button, yes. and we are really excited to share what we've learned from traveling over three years between bus life and van life, and hopefully it'll help. So in 2018, I lost my job and we went from just standard size house, started thinking about school buses. Truthfully, if we could have found a larger bus, we likely would have, but we ended up with a 40 foot school bus, which means we had roughly 280 to 320 square feet. Yeah, and, and at the time, a lot of people didn't talk about sizing and like how live on the road was. You will see kind of like videos of them exploring and doing cool stuff, but like nobody will talk about the sizing of your bus and the parking situation. 40 feet long, we ended up buying a Jeep just to tow with us. We'll explain the reason why. But in comparison, our Sprinter van is a 170 inch non-extended wheelbase version, which means we're just around the 22 feet in total length. Um, so quite the size difference there. Yes, also the pricing of vehicles, it's like a big difference. With buses, they there are a lot of different sizes and a lot of different prices and a lot of different mileages. And so we bought ours from a family owned dealership named Dunn Motor Co in Nashville, Tennessee. And the price that we paid for the bus was $3,500. Yep. And then finding a van was a whole ordeal. If you don't know about it, there's a lot of videos about us trying to find a van, but we finally found one in Paris, California. And it took us six months searching for that. In, in comparison, we only searched for a week to find our school bus. Yes, so three years ago, pretty much, finding a school bus was super easy. I don't know about now, but I know vans are very hard to come along. And they're only getting more difficult to find. Yes, so the price we pay for our van was? 17,800 before taxes. So that alone tells you they are becoming more popular. After all, they are becoming more expensive as well. Yep. So comparing everything there, <clears throat> sizing, uh, the price just to get the vehicle, our total build for the bus was around $16,000. And the total cost for our van conversion was around $35,000. Large difference there. We were double the price plus some, um, but we, did things a little differently than we did in the bus. Yes. Um, just because we wanted to maximize the comfort in such a small space. So with all of those things said, we clearly understand that price is a major factor. Um, we understand that square footage is a major factor, mm -hmm. but with that comes certain travel restrictions. Yes, all of it comes to your needs as well. Yeah, absolutely. And the way that you wanna travel. If you have a big family, Sometimes a van could get a little bit too tight. No, let's be honest. If you have a big family, a van is going to be too tight. Exactly. So a bus will be a best option for you. For sure. If you want to carry, like a lot of people have said, they want washers and dryers and things like that, a bus will be the best route for you as well. With our bus, I loved it because we were able to park and host friends, have a lot of space. I could get mad at Chase and he can go to the front or vice versa. Or and, the roof deck. You know, and, and was kind of like separate spaces. In the van, it's a little more tight. It's definitely a lot tighter. And traveling in the bus, we had to be significantly more deliberate with where we were going. For instance, the road we were driving today mm -hmm. had a length restriction and a suggestion if your vehicle's over 22 feet in length not to go down it. And we ran into that several times with our school bus and no one's ever talking about this, but the height and the length of your vehicle will drastically reduce 
the quality of your travel and the places that you might want to visit and you might not know beforehand. Yeah, like even if you want to travel and like visit cities, it's a little hard. For California sure. area, it's a little hard mm -hmm. because you're taking multiple space. Where there's already no space. Exactly. And then like for us, we have the Jeep, which was nice because we were able to park the bus a little farther than where we wanted to visit mm -hmm. and drive the Jeep during the day. So we love towing a vehicle, mm -hmm. of course, make the whole driving situation longer and parking, but we were able to visit a lot of places because of that. So in comparison with the van, we are truthfully able to park anywhere that you might be able to park a Honda Civic. Yes. Um, and that, with the exception of height restriction, we do mm -hmm. still have height restrictions, which we've ran into in certain shopping areas and in larger like cities. fast food restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but all in all, pretty much anywhere on the street that you can park your car, we can park our, our van. Mm -hmm. And honestly, we're getting better fuel economy than many people in their trucks, um, which is really, really cool. Um, and we're able to drive highway speeds. Yes, that's another thing. With the bus, we kind of have an idea that we were gonna be spending a lot of more money in fuel because how much in average will you say we spend in the bus um well we averaged between eight and a half and nine and a half miles per gallon and we had a 100 gallon fuel tank so almost every time we filled the bus up we were spending between 175 to 250 dollars yeah we would never run it below a quarter. Most of the time we would never run it below a half. I, I think the most expensive fill up that we've had in the van was around $54. And we're getting in the mountains about 18 miles per gallon on the highways around 20 to 21 miles per gallon. So that's a big difference as well. And we're able to travel at about 85 miles per hour. Yes, so normally that's another thing that we didn't know, which I guess is common sense, I don't know but the bus didn't go above 64 so we were pretty slow and when you put in maps i want to go from tennessee to i don't know florida and you saw the amount of time you'll be like oh we'll be there later today no that will take us like the double of that yeah take take your trip time and add a lot so yeah you're gonna be driving slower for sure, in the bus, in the van, we are able to drive super fast, like a regular car. Yeah. So we're able to like move around so much easier. When it comes to building inside a vehicle and the time that, that it takes, mm -hmm. for us, the bus took significantly less time, but we think the only reason for that was the weather when we were building yeah. the van. Yeah. Um, we were learning as we went in the bus and it took us four months of working on it, which seems to be a very quick amount of time based on yeah. when we meet people and figure out how long it took. In the van, on another hand, when we first got the van, we were like, oh, if the bus was bigger and we took four months, the van is going to be a piece of cake. It's going to be so quick. We can do this in two months. And it actually took us six months to complete the van because the space is smaller and you have to like multi-purpose your area. So a layout in a bus is so much easier to plan in my perspective because you have so much more space. Absolutely. In the van, you just have to get smart about it. Sometimes plans change along the way. The weather yeah. screwed up the whole thing with the van as well. When it comes to like maintaining a bus or a van, we never really had to deal with anything far outside of the norm. Like we always change our fluids, like uh, our, our oil our filters things like that um, ahead of maintenance the bus was around 180 dollars to do that and the van's around 130 dollars to do that so they're they're pretty similar there the bus because you're traveling less distance it, in more a longer time. amount of time i don't think you're spending more on maintenance in that respect with the van we're, we're covering much greater distances and much shorter amounts of time 
So we've changed the oil already three times to one time that we changed it in the bus. Yeah. With either a bus or a van, you're gonna have to know how to fix things that are gonna break. Literally everything from your electrical system to things on your vehicle to mm -hmm. propane, if you have propane. You're gonna have to troubleshoot solar systems. Like if you're not comfortable with that, this might not be the best route for you. Hopefully you're in an area that you can take your van or your bus to get fixed. If you're not, you're gonna have to figure it out along the way. And toes get very expensive on these vehicles because they're big and heavy. <laughs> we have got stuck in the bus and in the van. With the bus, we got stuck and it cost us... A little over 200 bucks just to get pulled out. And with the van, we were smart enough to get good Sam, which is around how much? It was like 160 bucks for the entire year. After all, there's pros and cons to both of them. I loved both of them. And I would not be able to say like, oh, I'm gonna stay in a van for the rest of my life. I will never do a bus mm -hmm. because in the future we'll like to have a family. Having a bigger space will be nice. But with that, there are also cons to consider. Um, I think for me, I was both more comfortable and more uncomfortable in the bus. Yeah. Driving it was fun until it wasn't fun and, and trying to put it places that we know we shouldn't was awful. In the van, it's a little more relaxing. Oh, for sure. In the van, we have air conditioner, which is nice. We can roll down our windows, mm -hmm. which is nice. <laughs> I can listen to music very easily. Yeah, I can help driving, which you never let me do, but I could. And we feel like we, we don't stick out as much. Exactly, which in part the quirkiness of the bus was so cool because we will be driving and people will be like giving us thumbs up and like, you know, it's like something much cooler and different than just a van. But on the same hand, what is quirky and, and kind of brings nostalgia to some people, it does eventually wear off. Yes. And it starts to become a burden. Yeah, because like it's our home as well. And yep. some people don't differentiate between it's their home, it's where they live to like, oh, this is a cool bus, let's check it out. Like we had people that they will just like open the doors of the bus and, and just walk in. walk in, which you never will think of someone doing it in your home. No. So with everything that we've just discussed, what do you think our next rig will be? I don't know because my brain is telling me like you can go smaller but also like I would like a family. Here's the thing. I think if you want something fun and quirky that's a little less practical than building a small mm -hmm. home, build a bus. Park that on your land. Yeah. Or if you want to travel in a bus and you don't want to deal with like the things that we had to deal with our big bus, we probably would do a five window bus. Maybe, yeah, like a five to an eight window bus. I think that's a good size, like mm -hmm. mid-length to short almost. And you still have so much space. Yeah, but to buy a 40 foot bus and travel around in it, I don't think that's the right move. I think if we were to do another van, this is something that we considered in the beginning, we would for sure do a four by four. Yeah. Not that we would always use it. But it will be nice to have it. Yeah, we found ourselves in like one situation that it would be nice to have a four by four. Maybe if we had one, we would put ourselves in more positions that would be nice yeah. to kind of have it. But I almost think we could probably do a 144, which is the shorter Sprinter. And I say a Sprinter because I truly believe that the Sprinter vans are the most capable. These are things that you need to add and think about it. Overall, my advice is sit down and plan. I'm a big planner. I like planning, Chase is not. But figure it out what type of travels you want to do. What's your budget? How, how long you want to stay in certain areas and how close you want to stay to certain areas too because the size of your vehicle will determine that. Your layout, your necessities, what hobbies you have. What your budget for repairs may or may not be. And from there, see which rig will be the best for you. For me, having gone to a van, I do not think I could ever travel part-time or full-time in a bus again. Maybe we just buy a bus and park it in lane. That would be my suggestion. That would probably be my only solution back into a bus. Yeah, the bus, the bus space is just so nice. Yeah. And you can do so much with it. But traveling, it's a little tricky. I'm not saying that you cannot do it. There's tons of people that do it. 
but this has been our experience. Yes. Yeah, we had friends who haven't quite understood our experience with the bus. There were places we couldn't go, places mm -hmm. that would turn us away, places that we just couldn't get to any route that we wanted to. Yeah. And they never experienced that. And you might not ever as well. But with the van, you truly don't have to plan nearly as much if any at all, and you can fit almost anywhere that you want to be. And exactly. I think those are, are two things that aren't spoken about nearly enough. Any size van, any type of van. Will be a little bit easier to yeah. maneuver. So with all of these being said, which rig do you think you could do? Are you team van or team bus? Would you take either of them internationally? <gasps> oh, we'd love to do that with so, either of them. Let us know down below. If you have any questions that maybe we didn't go into specific details on, drop them down in the comment section. We're always responding there. If this is your first time you've stuck around till now, well, hit that subscribe and stick around. We post every Sunday, so we'll see you every week from here on out. We'll see you, friends, next Sunday. Thank you for being here. We love you. Look at it, look at it, look at it.